Europe. It's William calling from Weebie Blogs, and I'm joined by Denise in the Netherlands, Porik in Ireland, and Patrick in Austria. And we're here with another edition of the Wee Wee Roundup, bringing you the hottest Eurovision news from the past few days and looking forward to what's to come. Now, we have a lot to cover from Greece to Slovenia, so let's do this! <laughs> In Greece, voters and jurors have chosen Maria Elena Kiroku with her song One Last Breath. Y'all, she's breathing hard, she's pitch perfect, she's on point. How did you feel about her victory? I'm a little disappointed. I mean, she was the best of the night and, and she did incredible. Her voice is amazing and her stage presence, it was all amazing. So it was deserved that she was the winner. Um, but um disappointed in the song it's another ballad we already have a dozen of ballads and it's not the best one yet so yeah i'm a little disappointed yeah it's one of greece's weaker entries i think um it's an average ballad in a year that's chock-a-block full of ballads so like even if we didn't have patrick is grimacing but anyways even if we didn't have um so many ballads it still would be a bad choice in my opinion and it's it's dull and it's boring and it's gone, like, it's even dull for all the ballads that have been selected. It's just, mm -hmm. no. Um, yeah, Porek hates ballads. That's why he's so bitchy <laughs> right now. Um, I love it. I totally love it. It's one of my favorites this year. It's really strong. And yesterday, I was really surprised. Before the show, I didn't like it so much. But then I saw her uh, live, and it was really breathtaking. Like, the other ones who, who had good songs were so bad at vocally. So it was a big... Thing, uh, that she that she performed this well and uh, she deserved to win in my opinion she was wonderful and I think she could do really well in Vienna that's right I'm down with the M.E.K. Maria Elena Kiraku she totally surprised me on the night because when I saw that video we said it before pretty girl on the piano boring 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 seen it before I mean, I thought Lithuania 2011 piano. I just, I just like, this is dull. But then she took the stage and this was like, I felt Laura Fabian. I felt <laughs> Celine Dion. I felt Maria Elena. It, th this live is just amazing. It's stirring. Um, I think with the right staging, she could go top 10 at Eurovision. Definitely. Top 10, as in top 10 disasters. <laughs> Now, <laughs> Porik is not feeling it, but Porik, let's look at the results, actually. In the combined results, she won, but she also won the telling voting, televoting results. She won the jury vote. Um, Greece got behind this. But they didn't have much else to get behind. It's a fair point. <laughs> um, you know, on those results, uh, in terms of overall standings, Tomai, Aperji, and Legend came second. Shia Hansen came third. Baris came fourth. And C Real Serial came fifth. Were you guys surprised by that? Yes, I really thought that Shia would win it. Uh, she's a big star in Greece and her song was amazing. The readers of our site, they uh, wanted her to win, so I really thought she would win. But when I saw the performance, her vocals were so bad and it's such a shame because I still love the song and I will still play it, but not the live version. I don't know, I think maybe the stage show could have been too messy and she got distracted because she came out wearing this kind of big ancient Greek gown and then next thing you blink and she's there wearing practically nothing apart from a few dangly sparkly things. So that probably distracted her vocals a bit. Yeah, I think the performance was amazing. It was the best of the evening from the dance parts, not the vocals. Oh my God, no. But um, yeah, I was disappointed <laughs> about her vocals. She really messed up with it and you couldn't bear, you could barely hear her. There was no power in her voice, nothing really which you will remember about. Uh, but that she came third, I was really surprised about that. I think the jury messed her up. <laughs> Given how much she was moving and shaking and thrusting, I'm surprised she could sing at all. So credit to her for breathing, y'all. Um, she was more one last breath, in my opinion, with all that. Um, but yeah, you, you, we talked about all these ballads this year. You know, compared to the other ballads, do you think this ballad is one of the stronger ones? No, I don't yes. think so. I like the second <laughs> part of the song, <laughs> but not the first part. So, and um, other songs like Spain, I love the whole song of Spain. Mm. So it's an advantage if I only like half the song. Uh, well, disadvantage if I like that song. <laughs> um, yeah, I think um, that the, it's, it's one of the stronger ones in my opinion, because Greece sends, it's, it's like a, Anna Visi, 
style mm-hmm. that she does. She she has a strong voice like Anna, and she did amazing in in two thousand six. Came ninth, I think. That's good, um, and I think she that will do. She will do the same as Anna Vici, and I really love it. And I don't know if this is true, but my inkling is that Greek Euro fans were like, look. Last year we sent pop. It didn't do so well for us. Let's move away from that. So it could be, what some people, a reaction to last year's pop number, which you know was Greece's worst performance ever. Yeah, they they probably saw that how bad vocals will end up in Eurovision. So I think they decided really wise if it comes to the vocals, definitely. <laughs> Oh my god, I never thought I'd say this, but Slovenia is going direct to the final. That's because over the weekend, voters chose the husband-wife duo Mariah with their song Here For You. And I have to tell you, I am here for them. This is like the Noisettes, it's like Duffy, it's amazing, it's now, it's radio friendly. I can't believe this. I- I'm in love. Yeah. Totally agree with you. I love this song. It's amazing. And yeah, I still can believe that Slovenia is the one who might win this year. I know we haven't heard all the songs yet, but they are incredible. And her voice is, it's strange, but in a really good way. I want to hear more of it. And it's so amazing. I love it, love it, love it. Yeah, like it's amazing that a country that's given us such disasters as Eva Botta and Hannah Mancini can come along and give us like something this magnificent. And like it's, as Denise said, it's re- ready for the radio. Like you could imagine it on the radio right now. Um, it's just, and it's like such a feel good song and it's upbeat and it's not a dreary, bloody ballad. <laughs> Wonderful. No. <laughs> 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 um, I'm I'm really in a you know I, I I like it but it's nothing like really it's too special for me it's really too special it's it's for me it's a mess in my opinion it's 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 just it's a good song don't get me wrong but I don't like her voice it's 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 too special for me I I, I can't handle that <laughs> I just maybe you're too special for it probably <laughs> probably my my taste is better i don't know uh, <laughs> no I, I have no idea what should i say about it it's it's good but it's it's for me it's too special slovenia will go to the final with it because so many people love it i don't know why but um yeah it's okay it's nothing special it's too special <sighs> To me, she's got the voice of an angel if she went to like a disco and took some acid. Like there's something like angelic, but dirty. Something like good, but evil. It, it has everything. It's right in the middle. I can't really describe it, but it's just magical to me. And, um, and it's full of attitude as well. Like she's mm-hmm. fierce when she's singing on those vocals. There's confidence. You and, know? and the strings, I just love the whole thing. It's really rare to have like a danceable, upbeat song with strings in it. I mean, I know we had Fairy Tale, but this just melds so much electronic, classical, 50s, 2000s. I can't even wrap my head around it, but I will say this. You can tell they're a husband-wife duo because they have major chemistry. She's so at ease. He's there doing his thing, or is he doing this? I can't remember, but he has his mohawk. He's working it. They're just, they are everything to me. Amen. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but they have to get rid of that fake musician. He stands there, or she, I don't know what it is, like, ooh, like this all the time. It looks so silly. So please get rid of it, and your performance will be way better than this. And it's great yet, so, yeah. I actually like that pretend person yeah. playing their pretend violin. And, like, people have been criticizing, <laughs> saying it's cheesy and all this kind of stuff, but it stands out on it like memorable because it even got a mention a name drop during the Australian press conference yesterday so like they're talking about the imaginary fiddle down under like it can't be that bad and yeah she She should get rid of the headphones it looks so horrible I don't know why she why she wore it um but yeah as you said the the violin thing will stuck in your head it was in my head even if I don't like I'm not the biggest fan of it um, and as you said, in Australia, I think that many people will like it and that she, that they will do really well in the, the final. But I think the staging goes back to the point of being everything. They have, you know, the modern headphones, but then the classical instruments doing the crazy dance. Like, 
they've just, this discord is what they're playing on, and it's very clever. And we met Ray at Junior Eurovision. He, of course, was a genius behind Nisi Sam from Ula Lozar. Um, he knows what he's doing, y'all. That song did great in our poll. It was actually, we predicted it would win, even though it did much worse in the end. Um, he's got real talent. I just, I'm over the moon. Is this the best act to come out of Slovenia? Yes. Mm, oh. Maya Kuch. Yes. I think no, Maya no. Kuch is still my number one. Yes. But uh, Mariah is a close second. No, see, Mariah has the whole package. Maya Kuch had the voice, she had the image, she had a useless derivative song. Yes, Patrick, it was, no. a, a, Christina, it was a Christina Aguilera throwaway tribute. And Mariah has the whole package. And Maya Kuch, if it was a singing contest, the Eurovision singing contest, Maya Kuch would be the best, but it's the song contest. And so I just don't like the name. And her song was great. Y'all know what yeah. a Kuch is, where I'm from? It ain't pretty, y'all. Okay, never mind. Yeah, no, it's pronounced cute. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Every year, Eurofans dream of Adita Gorniak returning for Poland, and every year we're left crying because she doesn't. Well, news dropped yesterday that Miss Gorniak actually wanted to compete at Eurovision 2015, but that TVP said no. Apparently, she came just a few weeks ago, and they had already selected their act, which is to be revealed. You guys, are you upset? Do you think TVP should have told their existing act to go? What's going on? <laughs> they need to have an amazing artist. Um, that's the only way... They can they can say no to her. I mean, she's amazing. She's so lovely. She did amazing in 1994. She should have won. So they they need to have someone really amazing. I'm I'm indifferent really because I think she would have been a good choice last year. She released Your High, which um, considering she's probably in her 40s now at this stage, she's been because she's been on the go for 20 years. Um, but it sounded like Nicole Scherzinger and it's really modern and it would do well. Um, but see, it all depends on who they snubbed her for. And then in fairness, if she just racked up a few weeks ago and knocked on the door and black, hi, I'd like to sing for your vision. I've been saying no for the last 20 years, but I'm free now. Let me in. Like, you can understand them telling her to go and pull another one. Well, I was kind of disappointed that they said no to her. I mean, I love her music. And yeah, as Denise said, she should have won in 1994. But it would be unfair if they would tell the other one who they already selected, uh, no, you can't go because Adita came in our door and she was like, yeah, I'm going to Eurovision. No, uh, I think that would have been unfair. And it's good that they said no if when they already had the, their representative. It'd be hilarious if they were like, oh, we've already got this singer, let's say it's Cleo, and they're like, Adita wants to sing, so let's have a duet. So then you'd have like a rapping Cleo next to a balladaring um, Adita. That'd be yeah. um, but yes, it's not going to happen. But what's quite sweet is in her Facebook message, she said, I wanted to give you a beautiful surprise in this special year, but we'll have to do that in another. Y'all, that's poetic. And if that's a sign of what she was going to sing, I'm all for it. But it's hopeful, like, she's expressed her interest now. The TV station know that she's interested. She said she'll wait for another year. So she's not been like, you didn't like me this year. I'm never coming back. So she couldn't come, come back next year and hand in her notices on time. And I've got to say, her song from 94, it has aged really well. Like, when you hear it, you still feel something. It's not like a lot of winners of yesteryear or runners-up of yesteryear, which are kind of forgettable and don't age. This could even be a hit now. Definitely. And I can't wait when Poland will reveal their actual artist, because if then comes out that it's it's even worse than Edita, which is probably the case. Will be. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. If they if they pick Sylvia Greszczak, they could do better. But I don't think so that they will do better than with Edita. Never. If not Edita, then who? Sylvia Greszczak, maybe? I'm not sure. I'm not up to date with the Polish music scene. I just know the people that we fling around in these randoms. There's Doda. There was someone you were yeah. mad about, but I couldn't remember her. Remember you yeah. were a bit obsessed with her, William. Anyways. <laughs> oh, yes, that one. <laughs> that something origami. I don't speak Polish. It was some kind of origami stuff. All right, well, why don't we just leave that at that, yeah? 
Australia's SBS has finally put us out of our misery. On March 4th, European time, they revealed that Guy Sebastian is its Eurovision 2015 singer. Now, we've already talked about Guy Sebastian in a preview video where we predicted him as one of the shortlisted artists, and then we talked about him again last night after he was revealed. But what are you guys feeling today? Was Guy Sebastian a smart decision? Yes, I think so. I haven't heard of him before, before this contest, um, but I've listened to some of his songs, and if he will sing a song like, um, oh, what was it called? Um, oh, Like a Drum, if he's going to sing something uh, like, like a Drum, it's an amazing song, and I think he will do great, and Australia might even win with a song like that. Um, but if he's going to sing another ballad, I don't know if he will win. I like his voice, but I'm not a big fan of his ballads, so the up-tempo songs are great. And he seems like a lovely boy, and yeah, he's kind of cute, and yeah, I think he will do well. He reminds me of Ali Moores without all the cheeky, chappy charm. Um, he, just listening, I listened to his album on Spotify. They don't have his most recent one, but they have one called 2010, which was released in 2010. Very imaginative name. Um, but yeah, he he just seems too good to be true. He seems too nice, maybe. And then, as Denise was saying, his ballad at the press conference was nothing to write on about. Yeah, like he was really talkative in the press conference. Like it was always like him talking, 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 talking. No, I'm not happy with the choice. I, I, I knew him before uh, it was announced. I, I was never a big fan of him, and I, w I won't be a big fan of him in Eurovision. Um, I think it's just he, he can sing, and he needs a good song, a really good song to do well. But it's Australia, and it's the first time, so I think they will go anyway to the top ten. Um, yeah, I wanted Samantha Chase. <laughs> The Australians are quite savvy. I mean, the fact that they were able to get themselves into Eurovision suggests they've given mm. us a lot of thought. And so even if he was playing it off like, oh, yeah, I don't know. I've got some ballads, some songs. I think you're right that they've thought this through and they have something mm. up their sleeve. I'm hoping, like Denise, that it's something like Like a Drum because the ballads just fall flat for me. Given that it's yeah. a year of ballads, they've had time to watch the other acts choose. They've got to know they cannot send a ballad. Even if they've sent a man, which stands out, they need to do something... Not necessarily danceable, but something more upbeat. And that's what's good mm. about Like a Drum, is it It has everything. It's kind of, it starts off slow and it builds. But like, they're taking it all very seriously. People are just saying, some people are saying that they're not in it to win it, but less than 24 hours after the act is announced, they've confirmed that they're going on the promotional circuit um, to your vision in concert. And a lot of countries don't bother when it's on their doorstep. Mm -hmm. And Australia are getting like whatever hour of flight over to do it. So like, they're not taking this half-heartedly. And you know what? He's going to fly business class because they respect <laughs> him, okay? So. Yeah, I'm really glad that they want to promote the song. They really want to give their best. And it's a great thing that I can see him before the real contest and Eurovision in contest. So I'm really glad about that. And you guys, you know, Patrick mentioned Samantha Jade. I just want to explore who the other options we wanted were. Patrick, uh, what do you like about Samantha? Samantha is really a, a, a good artist. She has a great voice. She knows how to move. She knows how to dance. She knows how to perform it. Just the whole package for me. And I actually, was my choice would have been Samantha Jade or Delta Goodrum because both of them are really amazing singers. And I think, it, okay, it's another, it would be another fam female vocalist. But uh, yeah, for me, they were the best choice. Yeah, I saw um, there was a lot of talk about the Veronicas because they did a tweet, something along the lines of, oh, Eurovision, wouldn't that be exciting or something like that? And then they released um, their latest song. It's been out in Australia since December, it just was released in Europe on Monday, I think. And it's called If You Love Someone, and it's exactly three minutes long. So like it would have been the perfect song to send to Eurovision. And the Veronica's are sassy pop kind of almost not exactly rock pop rock chick. Um, I saw someone was saying that if you had to compare them to your vision act, it'd be like Sinead, Mulvey and the Black Daisy, but much, much better, obviously. Now, y'all, I'm all about Guy Sebastian, and if it's going to be a guy, I'm glad it's Guy. But my heart of hearts, I was really hoping that if it was a woman, it would be Dami Eam. 
I know she went to the Australia or represented Australia at the Asia Song Contest, but I was hoping she'd get another shot. I love the immigrant story. I love her voice. I love the transformation. She's got some great songs. I mean, I guess the positive to come out of all of this is Australia's participation has forced us to kind of look at Australian music because I didn't know any of these people two or three weeks ago, and I've spent a lot of hours on YouTube since then um, seeing beach bodies and hearing some damn good music. So thank you SBS and thank you Eurovision. <laughs> Melfest fans in Sweden are getting excited because the final of Melody Festival in 2015 takes place on March 14th. We already know eight of the finalists, and Andre Shonson will decide the remaining four in the coming days. So, while we wait for that to happen, you guys, why don't we review some of the songs? We're not gonna look at the young kids, we're gonna look at the golden oldies. Yes, Jessica Anderson and Magnus Carlsen. Starting with Jessica Anderson, what do you think of her song, Can't Hurt Me Now? Hmm, it's good. It's not amazing, but it's a good song. I like it, and I think it suits Jessica very well. And um, she now has to give us the same emotion that the song wants to give us, so she knows how to do that. She has an amazing voice, so um, she delivers. And yeah, I think she's doing a great job, but I don't want this song to be the winner. She's a goody two-shoes. That's what it comes off as, that like, she's Little Miss Perfect in her bright golden dress. She can survive fine without him, and she's so perfect, that, but she has to dedicate her whole song to him. But anyways, and um, yeah, and she's there, and she's all gleaming in her golden locks in the wind machine, and then it's just unexciting, and at once it's done, you're kind of glad that you won't have to listen to it again. Uh I have to disagree with Porek, <laughs> as <Surprise>. always. <laughs> uh, Jessica Anderson is a good, is is really good. She's she has a good song. It's it's not amazing, as Denise said. It's it's a good song. It's a great ballad. She has strong vocals. I was kind of surprised that she made it to directly to the final. Uh, I thought somebody else will take the place. Uh, but yeah, I think she will do well in in the final. Not she won't be in the top three, but. Yeah, no, it's not Eurovision nowadays. Yo, she's lucky she's in the final. She's lucky she's in the top 28. If I was Krista Bjorkman, I would not have put this in the contest. I think she's relying on her reputation, the fact that she was part of fame. This is just dull, dull, dull. Pork makes a good point. She's goody two-shoes, golden. I want to get some mud and throw it at her or like pour water on her and see if smoke comes out of her ear. Like she's just a bit too robotic automaton. And it's like, I want personality. I like, you know, Victor and Samir, they've got sass. Like Eric Sada's got swagger. What does she have? Some damn yeah, blonde they, hair. But they, they, but they, can, they can't sing and she can. She's a Stepford wife. Mm. like a Scandinavian Stepford wife and she's evil as well because she knocked Molly out of the competition like Molly <laughs> should be the one in <laughs> with her spot Karma's a bitch and she's gonna bite Jessica real hard so Jessica Anderson says can't hurt me now but will the wee wee jury scores hurt her I'm hoping so she gets a three from me because this is dull 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 and I want her to go away now, a seven and a half. Uh, the song isn't that great, but I love her dress. I love the golden background. I love her voice. So a lot of things I love about it. I give her a five. She can sing. She looks well, but she's just too perfect and too by the book. Uh, 8.5 for me. 8.5? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to back her up a bit. I, 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 yeah, I have to help her. That's like more than me and Porik combined. <laughs> oh, well. We turn to Magnus Carlsen with the song Motmig i Gamlestan, Meet Me in Old Town. Now, y'all, I am more than happy to meet him in Old Town. This song is amazing. I know it harks back to every song he's ever sung with Alcazar or independently at Melody Festival, in, but I love it. It's timeless, it gets stuck in your head. I don't know what the hell he's saying, but I want to hear him say it. Oh, you are so going to hate me. <laughs> I think this song, well, it's not bad, but it's the worst song of all the direct qualifiers. Um, it's, I don't know what it is, but it's so, yeah, I don't like the words, but it's a little dated, so it's not timeless for me. And he now has to, uh, to dance, and he can sing, but that's all. I don't, I don't like this song. It's too much lager for me. Mm. 
Yeah, like last year, his bandmates, his ex bandmates in Alcazar, they managed to do Schlager and update it, and it sounded modern and it matched today's sounds. Whereas his is just dated. It's not retro, it's not timeless, it's dated with a capital D. And he's there with his little dance moves in his business suit. Why is he doing all this weird dance in a business suit? And then he doesn't bother to tuck in his shirt. No. Uh, this is Swedish Schlager at its best. It's amazing. I totally love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Magnus is, a, is, a, is, is an institution in Sweden. Everybody knows him and he's, he's really popular there and he can sing and he can perform and he makes everybody dance. I think he will do really well like Alcazar did last year with, with uh, Schlager's kind of Schlager song. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I love it. I think this song has a really strong Swedish identity. When you hear it, you know this is Melodi Festival and you know this is Sweden. Yeah. And let me tell you, we love Melodi Festival and we love Sweden. <laughs> the reason he is in a business suit, I will tell you, is because he's going to a meeting with an executive because he's just won Melfest and he's got to start planning for Vienna. Do not underestimate this, y'all. I know all the kiddies are going to vote Eric. They're going to vote Mons. But I feel like the slightly mm. older voter, maybe some of the more mature teenagers, We'll go for Magnus Carlsen. Dream on, honey. They're wasting their money. There's better ones they can go for than him. I mean, the one thing I will say is his outfit. Like, I'm glad you said his shirt was untucked because I thought it was just poorly fitted. It looks very strange. And I don't think his dan he can dance, actually. I think he's relying on those around him because he kind of, like, hobbles. It's not the Magnus Carlsen we used to know. And he fell out of a tanning booth while he was in his business suit. He was in a big rush, I think. That's why his shirt isn't tucked in and his tan is all over the place. And Presumably are all over to grab a taxi, the only word I can understand in the song. <laughs> Where will he place? Top five, bottom five, top two? Mm. I think he I would think place... So. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I, I, I can see him in the, at, the first, at, the, at the third place. I can see him there, top three. No, I yeah. think he will place around six, seven, eight, something like that. I think... Um, I know the top five, well, I know. I think Mariette, Eric, Mons, John, and Isa will be top five, and he will uh, be right after them, so it's six or seven. Yeah, I think even if he's popular with the Swedish, I don't think he'll appeal to the international juries, so I think they could drag him down a good lot as well. Mid-table, probably. I think y'all are smoking crack. I think this is top three, no doubt. The top five Denise mentioned are all great, but they're similar. They're competing for the same voters. I think this is slightly outside, so it's going to steal um, some of the others. It's going to sneak in. Y'all better watch out. I think Mariette is more the outside the box option rather than him. I'm over Mariette. That wind machine can blow her away too. So of course the Wee Wee jury is assigning scores out of 10. What do you guys rate this song? Um, because it's not that bad and not that good, it's just an average song, so I think a 6 is perfect for it. I gave him a 1.5. As in near zero? <laughs> near, but not quite. You can round it up to 2. <laughs> um, I'm not in, this, in the jury in Sweden, but uh, I, would, I would give him a 9. And I'm backing you up. He gets a nine from me because it's near perfection. You guys, this is seriously one of the most wide open Eurovisions ever. It's always a little boring when you know in advance who's going to win. Like in 2012, we knew Lorene was going to win. Great song. But still, a bit underwhelming because you know she's going to win. This year, I have no clue who's going to come out on top. I don't know about you. Is this a wide open year? Yes. Well, since we all agree, <laughs> let's go around and talk about each of our standout tracks. Maybe give me your top three, starting with Denise. Okay. Uh, my number one still is Estonia. I still love this song. They're my favorites. And I think no one can beat them in my top. Um, my second is Spain. They choose an amazing song, and I think their stage presence will be amazing. They showed us last year that, I, that they can have an amazing stage, and they will have it with this song. And Edurne is amazing, and I absolutely love it. 
And I think my third favorite is Slovenia. And I'm really glad that I can say that a country like Slovenia can be in my top three. Mariah is amazing. The song is amazing. And I think they will be in top five in a real Eurovision. I have shared two of the same tops with Denise, uh, Estonia and Slovenia. But I love both of them. They're modern. You can imagine them on the radio. That's not just the only reason I like them, but I can see them having the mass appeal that they need to do well. And I love them as well. And then the other one, it's sort of a guilty pleasure because it's kind of cheesy, but unbroken from Iceland. It kind of reminds me of um, Frozen's Let It Go, but kind of a cheerier, less I'm going to freeze everything kind of attitude. I have no clear top three, but I know my favorite is Hungary. My first place is definitely Hungary. I love Boggy. I love the story behind the song. I love the song. Hungary did the best choice for years. Estonia is my second uh, because it's amazing. <laughs> and I think third is Malta because uh, I really love Ember. I know many people know that, but um, I love Warrior, the song itself. And I can't wait for the new version. Maybe it will be my number one. I don't know. But yeah, and apart from that, I really love Lithuania and Iceland as well. They're both stunning songs. And yeah, I have no clear top three. Y'all, I have a very clear top three. It is Cyprus, Denmark, and Finland. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, y'all thought I was serious. <laughs> now, yeah, I kind of share the same thoughts as all of you. All of the songs you've named, I would also put in my top, you know, five, six, whatever it is. Um, if I had to pick, I would put Slovenia in there simply because I just heard it this morning and I love it. Um, it's so hard. Estonia, I've liked it from the first time I heard it. I loved the staging at Estilau. I think the it does live up to the hype. Um, I think that's it's sufficiently mainstream to appeal to a lot of people. Whereas some of my other favorites, like I love Iceland, but I think it will put some people off who will say, "Oh, that's too," as you said, frozen. So my top three would be Slovenia, Estonia, and you know what? I'm gonna say Georgia. No, Latvia. I'm gonna say Latvia because of her voice. It's a really amazing voice, and the staging in Latvia was killer. And you could see that doing really well on a big LED infused Eurovision stage. Um, but there's so many songs I could name, and I'm sure you guys could as well, that you also love. I love Hungary, um, I love Malta, I love Georgia, I love Serbia. I think Serbia stands out. So I guess another question then, since we all love so many songs, who do you think the top three finishers will be based on mainstream appeal, potential mm. for staging? Mm, I still think Estonia can win. I think Italy can win. The three guys are amazing. Their stage presence is great. A lot of people love the song, so I think they can win. Um, and I think that Finland can win. And for me, it will be a shame because I wish those boys the best. I really do. But the song itself, it isn't good. And in Eurovision Song Contest, I really want the song to be good. Yeah, I think Italy can win because they have... Um, they've kind of established names and they've the money behind them because they've got 7 million views on their video for Grand Amore in less than a week. So they've got the big fan base and I doubt that's all from Italians. Then I think Estonia could do well. Slovenia, I don't think it can do well enough to win because it's, it's really likeable, but I don't think it leaves the wow factor. It's kind of a song everyone likes, but would they like it enough to pick up their phone? Um, Latvia, I think, is too left field to win. Spain, if they do magnificent staging, because they've put so much hype into it, there must be something more than just what we've seen so far. So maybe Spain, Estonia, and um, Italy would be my top three that would win at the moment. I think Finland is in the race to do it. I don't think they would decide. The song would, wouldn't deserve it. The guys maybe because it's 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 good to see them in Eurovision, but with a good song it would be even better. So I but they're in the win, they're in the run to to the victory, and I also see Estonia doing really well. I think they could definitely win because it's 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 like you heard it something somewhere, but it's it's special and uh, yeah, and I think, oh, I think. 
yeah, I think that's it so in the moment. I don't, I can't, and Italy, of course, because they're charting all over the world on iTunes and with the YouTube views. And I don't like them personally, but yeah, probably those three. Yeah, Il Volo, do you remember Il Devo? I just feel like this is a younger version. I just feel like we've heard it before. Um, I can't get into this. Italy's always tricky because they send great acts. There's a lot of hype. And then they don't actually do that well. Like Emma Marone, it was a hot mess at Eurovision. I think the drawback of being a star is you have a lot to do. So Il Volo, they've got concerts to perform. They've got gigs. They've got all sorts. So maybe they don't have the time to invest. I mean, I feel like Marco Mingoni was the last kind of standout I guess that was just he was, on, he, he was on the year before last. They've only had four. <laughs> so not too far ago. But what did he come, like, eight, nine, ten? He was, you know, he wasn't... He was in the top ten. Nina was yeah. in the top ten, and Raul was in the top ten. But I don't... Only Ra- Raul, Raphael, whatever, was at the top five, so... He I, placed second. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. But, like, the others <laughs> were not top five. I, can't, I still can't believe it. Um, and, <laughs> yeah. yeah it, it's Emma Maroney was the only one that messed it up. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I can see, hard. yeah, I can see. <laughs> but um, I just, I'm not convinced Il Volo can do it. I think a lot of those 7 million views will be Italians. In mm-hmm. terms of Finland, I think that it's hard to predict how the jury will vote because, you know, for instance, Abiranovsky Babushki nearly won the televote against Lorene, but then the jury butchered them. Um, and they still came, you know, quite high. Uh, so with Finland, it's unclear how much the jury would butcher them. Perhaps, you know, jury is, they're people too, and they might buy into the story, which is a very powerful story as well. But see, the thing is that this since last year, when they released the full breakdown of what each juror votes for and each point, and then the jurors have are told that they have to take musicality, staging, and different things into account. And there's no box for them to tick for backstory. <laughs> so then, like, if they're meant to be musical experts, and then they mark this really high, and then the whole world gets to see that they mark this really high. But, like, I don't know if they'd be willing to do that, especially when it's not as anonymous as it was in the past. It's interesting, though. I guess there could be street cred with saying, I went against what people told me I should do and voted my heart. I think... You know, people often make decisions like that. Um, you never know. I mean, Conchita, certainly she, had, she was musically there. We can't say she wasn't. But I think certainly her backstory helped a lot. So we've discussed who we think the top three will be. Who do you guys think will be bringing up the rear and finishing last? Mm, uh, I want Denmark, Finland, and Moldova. To end somewhere in the bottom, but I don't think they will. Well, Moldova might be, but I think um, maybe Cyprus, um, yeah, Moldova, and um, the third one. Yeah, well, it's so hard to tell. Um, I don't know, maybe you guys? <laughs> I have, from my bottom tree, I have two clear dead last acts, and that's. Finland and Moldova. They're both horrible songs. Finland's song is the nice backstory. That goes fine. Moldova's is just dated. It was dated 10 years ago. It sounds horrible. His hair is horrible. He's doing these horrible dance moves. And then there's all this controversy. It's just a terrible entry. Then I kind of have two more that I kind of flick back and forth between my bottom three. So sometimes it's Denmark. Sometimes it's Georgia. Are you kidding me? Georgia is in your bottom three? Yeah, it's yeah. in my top, oh. my bottom three as well. <laughs> yeah, Nina Sablati is amazing. She's got the voice, she's got the look, she's avant-garde. The song is being worked on by Thomas Jeeson, so it may have alienated you in January, but it's going to bring it home in May. She is a warrior and so am I. Hello! She's gone again. Oh my god, my passion has kicked Denise off the Skype call, but that's how I feel about Warrior. This is not bottom three, Porik. This is top ten. Top 10. Top 10. If El Dream could go top 10, this can go top 10. Well, she's in my bottom three as well. I really hate the song. And she's scary. She's so scary. She looks like a vampire. vampire. I already said that so many times. But it's still there. Um, I think she, she's, she's not good. No. And um, Finland, of, of the song, not of the people. Just the song is horrible and of course Moldova like they're the worst uh, since years they uh, it's and with the things about the rigging and the voting things it's it's just 
Yeah, it's dated. It's really dated, no. It, Moldova's really interesting. So first of all, it's unclear if he'll actually get to Eurovision, <laughs> given mm -hmm. all the hype and speculation and rumor and intrigue. But assuming he does, I, could, I would rate it last on my list. But with Moldova, you can never tell how people are going to react. I read in one message board, someone said, the Mold Moldova has chosen their song. It's dated, cheesy, horrible lyrics. Perfect. Because a lot of people <laughs> love things that are bad. You know, for instance, Christina Scarlet, I thought it was a serious entry. I didn't necessarily yeah. rate it in my top whatever, but I thought it would mm. qualify. I thought it was like a serious song. And um, it came dead last. So this year with a song which I think is total crap, watch it go direct to the final. I mean... I hope not. Moldova, I mean, they are in a, they're in a strong semi-final with, with countries... Strong countries, but I don't think Russia will will vote for them. <laughs> no, given that they're like invading in a few days. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, you cr the Ukrainian diaspora is quite large as well. People forget this. There are Ukrainians all over Eastern Europe, and um, they're not they don't have an act of support. So maybe they would get behind the Ukrainian link, which is Edward. Um, I, I feel like with Ukraine, because the population is quite large, you can't underestimate that. Yeah, but the thing is with Moldova, usually their acts are so bad that they're good. Mm. There's not a fear of this lad being so bad that he's good. He's just playing awful. <laughs> and he can't sing. He can't sing. Yes. Well, it seems like we agree on Finland and Moldova. Um, for my bottom three, I'm going to go Finland, Moldova. I mean, based on historical voting patterns, I'd say Israel. But we haven't heard the song. <laughs> You know, Denmark, I don't think is bad, actually. I think that it's not my favorite song, but they've produced it in such a way that the more you hear it, the more you like it. And, it, you know, that replay, we hear the replay how many times? Four times? I, I, there's something about it that gets stuck in your head. And it's Denmark always... the opposite with me. Mm. Denmark, I heard it the first time. I was like, I don't get all this hate. It's not too bad. I've heard it so many times that I absolutely despise the song. <laughs> <laughs> my other fear is something like Latvia would come towards the bottom even though it's amazing just because for whatever reason they struggle to get points like, yeah but in the past they haven't sent good songs <laughs> and cake to bake cake to bake didn't come last though did it it was like, it was 12 yeah it, it was almost in the final yeah um, mm, and it was awful <laughs> <laughs> now yeah that was one of my my faves that was real good we have a strong year i mean many people are complaining about oh my god this is so horrible year oh my god no but i see that Especially semi-final two became so strong with Slovenia, with Malta, with all those pop ballads, dark things. It's a strong year, definitely. I agree. This is one of the strongest years in recent memory to me. I um, the fact that we can't figure out a winner is a good sign. Like I rather have a lot of mediocre songs that make for an exciting competition than having two standout songs in a really bad field. Mm. Um, this just is really yeah. exciting. It's like 2011. 2011 is kind of, a lot of people look back on that with very fond memories as being one of the best contests as a show rather than as the outright winner or whatever. But this year could be shaping up to be a bit like that. That's what we think. What do you guys think? You can let us know here on Wooby Blogs and on our social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, at Wooby Blogs. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.